Today, we're gonna to talk about healthy versus unhealthy anger. So how do we know when anger is healthy and when it's sort of like something that we should be experiencing and is okay to experience? And how do we know when anger is unhealthy? And in either case, we're also gonna teach y'all some techniques to get control of your anger. So anger is an incredibly tricky emotion because first of all, it causes us to lose control, right? When we get angry, we tend to do things that we will regret later. We tend to damage relationships, maybe shoot ourselves in the foot in terms of like work or school or things like that. The anger gets control of us and then we end up doing things that we regret. The other reason that anger is such a problem is because we know that anger causes people to do things that they regret. And so then what we do as a society is we tend to demonize anger, right? When people are publicly pissed off or they express their anger in some way, we all retreat from anger. So as a whole, we tend to demonize the emotion of anger. And so we all sort of think about, okay, like there's some emotions that are good emotions, right? Like joy and peace and tranquility and love and compassion and curiosity. All of these things are good emotions. And then there are the bad emotions like anger and sadness and guilt and shame. And what we try to do is cultivate lives where we experience a lot of the good emotions and try to minimize the experience of the negative emotions. And anger is one that is particularly like difficult to deal with because anger is the one that is oftentimes like harmful to other people. And so since we demonize anger, it's really hard to figure out like, okay, like how do I know when it's okay to feel angry? When is it okay to feel angry? What should I do if I'm feeling angry? Is this something that will hurt other people or is this like an appropriate healthy emotion that I should be experiencing? I wanna take a moment to thank our HG coaches. I've taught at a lot of different places and worked with a lot of different people. And honestly, our coaches are some of the best people I've ever worked with. HG coaches have helped over 10,000 people find purpose, direction, and improve their mental health. After about 20 weeks of coaching, the average client experiences a 58% improvement in sense of purpose in life, a 45% improvement in feelings of anxiety, and even a 35% reduction in feelings of despair. And this isn't just me saying this. At this point, we've done this for three years, run six research studies, and even presented our findings at the American Psychiatric Association National Conference. Over 100,000 sessions later, I can confidently say this works. So if you're interested in checking out HE Coaching for yourself, go to healthygamer.gg slash coaching to learn more. So let's start by looking at healthy anger. And let's start by also looking at why we get angry in the first place. So we have to understand that anger is like a conserved emotion, not just in human beings, but across like animals as well, right? So anger isn't a bug, it's a feature. Our brains are all designed with the capacity for anger. And in fact, we even look at things like developmental psychology where there are kids who are in their who are two years old and in the US we'll talk about the terrible twos, which is when kids start to get really like angry. This is when children are literally developmentally learning the capacity for anger. And so anger is like absolutely a healthy part of our brain. And let's understand what it's there for. So anger is there to protect our territory. So if you think a little bit about like, let's look at the animal kingdom, right? When do animals get angry? Like if one animal has like, let's say I'm, I'm a tiger and I've like hunted something, like I've hunted a deer and then I'm eating my deer. And if someone else, another animal tries to take that deer away from me, as a tiger, I'm going to get angry. You will see anger in the tiger. You'll see sort of this territorial defense. And that's what tends to happen in the animal kingdom, right? Anytime the territory of an animal is violated, the response is anger. So anger is a defensive and protective emotion. And if we sort of think a little bit about it, like anger does all kinds of stuff to the brain. It like lowers our capacity to feel pain, right? It, it causes us to engage in conflict and kind of protect ourselves. So anger is actually a healthy emotion when it is used to protect our boundaries or territories. So when we sort of don't feel that healthy anger, and this is like one manifestation of unhealthy anger, we sort of become doormats, right? So in, when people like violate my territory, I will like let them do that. So if someone, let's say, steals something from me at school and I don't get angry enough, if I don't feel that anger, if I feel fear instead, I will let people take things away from me. 
in places like work or things like that, like oftentimes we'll also hear about, you know, toxicity in the work environment or toxicity from bosses or even situations like sexual harassment. Or we'll we'll sort of hear tons of stuff in our community about like abuse of home situations, abuse of partners, abuse of parents. And what those people will oftentimes do is violate our boundaries. And then if we don't have a healthy amount of anger, we will let people kind of do that. There's a whole complicated reason why that is, but I just want to point out to you all that when we don't protect our territory, that can sort of be an unhealthy form of anger as well. And so ideally what we want to do with anger is anger is a signal from our brain, our body that, hey, this is mine and you don't get to take this away from me. This can also be kind of problematic because even when we feel healthy anger, sometimes we can lose control of it. And if we let the anger get the better of us, even if it's appropriate, we'll end up with sort of a negative outcome, right? So if, if I'm in an abusive situation at home and my parents control my living situation and I get angry with them, they will punish me for it, okay? So the first thing to understand is that anger is healthy. And generally speaking, when your territory or your boundaries are violated— Anger is actually a healthy and normal response. We still want to be able to control it, but this is like an appropriate expression of anger. So what is inappropriate anger? So inappropriate anger tends to come from thwarted expectations, comes from a sense of deservingness or entitlement. So if we kind of think about it, how does a thwarted expectation activate our territory circuitry in the brain? Right. So think about it for a second. Like, OK, what does an expectation have to do with this is territorial protection circuitry? So if we really look at expectations, what an expectation is, is it something that it's a territory that we've claimed that we don't really own? That's really what an expectation is. Right. It's this idea that, hey, this thing is going to happen. This thing is mine. I deserve this. But then I don't get it, which means that I end up getting angry. So let's just run through a couple of examples. So let's say that. I like a girl. And if I like a girl or a guy, whatever, right, I will invest a lot into the relationship. So I'll get this person flowers. I'll call them all the time. I'll be in emotional support. We'll hang out when we go out to dinner. I will pay for them. And so we sort of think about this like, I like this person. I'm interested in this person. But the more that I invest in the, the relationship, the more I start to form a territorial wall around this person. This is my territory. I'm expanding into this this space and this person owes me and then if this person starts dating someone else or doesn't return my texts or things like that i get incredibly angry right other examples of this that i've seen a ton we see this a lot in our career coaching program for example is people who work really hard and then are really upset that they don't get recognized or they they don't get the promotion that they believe that they deserve so this is another example of i'm going to invest a lot of energy and then i expect a return and when I expect a return and I don't get it, I end up getting really, really pissed off. We also see this in our community with people like gamers, right? And if you play video games, you know what this is like. Because when I queue up for a particular video game and I have teammates and I'm having a really good game and someone else throws the game, I tilt really hard. And what is that? What is tilt? It's a thwarted expectation. I did not deserve to lose this game. I should have won this game because I was playing really well and this person didn't do what they were supposed to do. So I'm going to get really, really, really pissed off about it. So if we look at what is the nature of unhealthy anger, it is thwarted expectation. It is when we claim territory, right? So I've claimed that this is a win. I should be winning here. This person should love me by now. I should get this promotion. These are things that I should have and that I am entitled or owed to owed. And so when we thwart that expectation, when that expectation gets thwarted, we lose this territory that we believe we owned. And then we get really, really pissed off. So now the question kind of becomes, okay, how do we deal with that, right? So first of all, how do we tell if this is really my territory or it's not my territory? And in either case, if I get upset, how should I deal with that? So let's understand a little bit about the physiology of anger. So when we get angry and we get kind of, kind of get this territorial violation, right, whether it's truly our territory or not, which we'll get to, our body engages in a whole physiologic response. So we activate something called the sympathetic nervous system. So this is the part of our, our body that basically protects us, causes us to engage in, in battles. So it sort of activates our fight or flight response. 
And in either case, even if we're running away from things, we still need our body to be very, very focused and, and have a ton of energy, right? So when we get angry, we activate this part of our nervous system that prepares us for action. And the sympathetic nervous system does all kinds of other things cognitively. So it causes us to like be like really, really one-pointed. So it becomes really hard to think about other things. It causes us to see things in black and white. So we don't really like consider all these other things that may be relevant. Like let's say I'm playing a video game and even if I played well, maybe, you know, the reason that I'm having a good game is because my team has been making sacrifices for my sake and they haven't been making those sacrifices for my teammate's sake and that's why they're feeding. So there's all kinds of things that we don't keep track of when our sympathetic nervous system is active. We sort of get this tunnel vision and we see in terms of black and white. So one of the key things that we can do to get control of our anger is to disable that sympathetic nervous system activation. We actually want to shut down our adrenaline response, at least temporarily. And one of the simplest ways we can do that is with breathing. So if we look at like sort of anger, anger is a concerted physiologic response, right? So we'll, we'll sort of release adrenaline. Adrenaline travels all through our body and activates all kinds of things. It changes the way that we think. It even causes us to clench our muscles, changes our facial expression. And very importantly, it changes our heart rate and our respiratory rhythm. So our heart rate starts going fast, blood pressure goes up, and our respiratory rate changes as well, right? So I'm going to breathe in an angry way. <sighs> that is the, the pattern of angry breathing. So what can we do? So this is what's really interesting. If we change our pattern of breathing, it will actually deactivate our sympathetic nervous system. So if you look at the angry pattern of breathing, it's rapid inhalation, deep and rapid exhalation, right? So all we need to do to reduce our anger is to slow down our respiratory rate. And one of the simplest things that you can do is just stop breathing for about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. So just pause your breath. If you're feeling angry, you can slow down your breathing. So you can stretch out one breath to 10 seconds or 12 seconds. So six seconds in, six seconds out, or what, what I found is really effective is you can just pause your breathing for 10 seconds. So hold your breath and count to 10 and then breathe slowly, okay? So that's one thing you can do. It'll literally change your physiology. Your mind will become a little bit less like kind of tunnel vision. You'll be able to like calm down and relax a little bit. The other thing that we're going to teach you is oftentimes when we feel angry, there's someone else involved. And so one of the things that you can do is like, literally tell that person that you're feeling angry and take a step back from the situation. So you can, let's say you're in an argument with someone or you're talking to your parents and they're pissing you off or whatever. You can sort of, or someone has just told you after you've invested a year of your life and getting them to fall in love with you that they're dating someone else. You can even just say to that person, hey, I'm feeling frustrated and angry right now. I need to take a, a step back from this conversation or this interaction. You literally say that hey, I'm feeling frustrated right now. I need to take a step back from this conversation, okay? Just use those words, and then if you can, take a step back. If you're in a situation where you can't really control that, like you're in the middle of a game, right, you can maybe mute them or just say, hey, y'all, I'm feeling kind of pissed off. Like, I'm going to go on mute for a few minutes to try to, like, focus, you know, get my focus back. Or if you're in a situation at home where that doesn't work, like, you can't always control that, but you can, just, you can still say it, right? So you can tell your parents even, hey, I'm feeling really like frustrated and angry and it's hard for me to listen to you right now. Can I please take a step away from this conversation? And literally what you can do is like leave the room. And I've used this actually in clinical settings as well, which is like, you know, if, if there's a patient who's like yelling at me when I'm trying to help them in the emergency room, sometimes, first of all, it's appropriate for me to be angry with them. And this is something that I learned, which is really bizarre, right? So I was training in residency at the time. And like there was a patient who was high on cocaine and was very abusive to the staff. I went in to try to help them. And they started cussing me out and using racial slurs and things like that. And so I went and I talked to my attending. Here's an, a healthy, uh, here's an example of healthy use of anger, by the way. So he goes in and he says, walks right in and says, hey, you can't be doing this. This is completely inappropriate. You're in a hospital. There are nurses here. There are doctors here. Everyone's here to help you. The police brought you in. And instead of going to jail, we are trying to help you. So the, the way you're behaving is completely inappropriate. We come in here over and over again to try to help you and you just yell at us. So what we're going to do is step out of the room. You can stay here as long as you want to. We'll check back in an hour or two hours or three hours. And when you're ready to talk to us, you better do it in a polite way. And if you're not ready to talk to us in a polite way, you can, you can stay here as long as you want. And then he stepped out of the room. 
right? And even when I've sort of talked with patients who are very difficult, I'll say, hey, I'm feeling kind of like frustrated. So I use that same technique sort of with this with people like that, right? Where they're like yelling at you, you can kind of say, hey, like I'm feeling really frustrated by this conversation. I'm here to help you. And I feel like I'm not being heard. You're not really listening to what I'm saying. I can also see that you're feeling frustrated and that people around here don't seem to be listening to what you're saying. So I need to take a step away from this because you deserve to be listened to. I'll be back in 15 minutes. I hope we can continue the conversation then, right? And then you just step out. So acknowledge your feeling of frustration or anger. And unless you're in a real heavy power dynamic kind of situation, step out of the conversation and just give yourself the opportunity to calm down. So that, those are two things that you can do in the moment to get control of your anger. The next thing that we have to talk a little bit about is the origins of unhealthy anger. So if I have these thwarted expectations, if I really want to fix that, it's not just about managing the anger in the moment. It's about why am I getting into these situations in the first place? And when I work with people who are chronically angry, pissed off at life, they're so mad about you know, this political party and they're so mad about the government and they're so mad about capitalism and they're so mad about socialism and they're so mad about men and they're so mad about women. They're just mad about everything. They're mad at this game, mad at this game, mad at this game. What's going on with those people who are chronically angry? These people have inappropriate expectations. So this is what, what's really tricky is when we get angry, oftentimes the mindset that we'll have is I deserve this, right? And since I didn't get something that I deserve, I deserve to be angry, and the angry anger is justified. But if you really want to get control over anger, it's not about what you deserve. It's about what you expect. So there are all kinds of people who deserve all kinds of things, but that doesn't necessarily make them angry. The anger, so, and this is where, like, I work with people who are, you know, 15 years old and have been diagnosed with cancer. Some of them will get really angry, but some of them won't. And they'll say, I don't deserve this. It makes me sad. It's unfortunate, but I'm not going to get pissed and tilt about it. How do I move forward? So even in those situations, stuff happens all the time to people that they don't deserve, but they don't necessarily get angry about it, right? It's okay to feel some amount of anger, but the, the key thing is if you want to stop being angry, like all the time, what you really need to focus on is not what you deserve, but how did you come to expect this? And as we recognize that, we will start to get a lot of long-term control over our anger. So pay attention to, instead of asking yourself, what do I deserve? Ask yourself, why did I expect this to happen, right? And that's where a lot of really, really like healing stuff starts to happen. That's where you start to get a lot of insight into your own behavior, into the behavior of others. Why did I expect that this person would date me? Because each time I gave them something, I wanted something in return, but I never actually let them know, right? I never actually went out and asked them, why did I expect to be promoted? There are four people who are up for promotion. Why did I believe I was entitled to this? It's because I worked really hard. Well, the other three people may have worked really hard too, right? But what, why did I think I expect it? So this is where you really have to tunnel down into why you expect this in the first place. And this is what we try to really help people with, especially in things like career coaching, is understand that what you expect and what you do are two separate things. And there's a beautiful way to kind of think about this, which is that what we sort of encourage people to do is focus on the actions, but don't expect a particular outcome. So if you're working really hard towards something, don't do it in the expectation that you're going to get something back. So if you have a friend that you're attracted to, or if you have a friend, if you want to support them, you should support them because you think that's the right kind of thing to do, not because you want to be owed something in return. And similarly at work, that's the kind of situation. I know this is like kind of weird and may even be counterintuitive, but if you want to go the extra mile, go the extra mile because you want to learn something or because you want to help the company. And if they fail to recognize that, that's on them. So this is really important that if we really want to get to the origins of that unhealthy anger, it comes from our expectations and specifically from our somewhat inappropriate expectations. Because in this world, we can't control what other people do. And the whole point of unhealthy anger is we are expecting someone else to do something. We are taking territory over someone else's behavior. And when they don't behave the way that they're supposed to, they're feeding, they're not going out with me, they decided to promote someone else, we get pissed. But this is the key thing. We can't actually control that, right? We can't make anyone fall in love with me. I don't get to determine every time I queue up who's on my team, 
right? I don't get to determine what my, who my boss picks to promote. All I can control is my actions. And so that's what you should really focus on. And so try to figure out, okay, where did I start to expect this? Why did I expect this? How did this expectation build up? And as you go through that process, what you'll start to discover is that some of the expectations you have in life are a little bit inappropriate. And as you start to adjust your expectations, now this has nothing to do with what you deserve or how much effort you put in. This is what's also a little bit tricky. It's like, I can, I can work really hard and try to do a good job and still not expect that something goes my way. This is also something, just to give you all an example of like the nuance of this. So as a doctor, right, I can go to work and I can do a really good job and I can try my hardest, but I can't necessarily save a life. And that's what's so tricky is that when we work really hard, we think, oh, I deserve to save this life or I did everything that they could. Why isn't this person living? It's just not how it works. So medicine teaches you how to walk that tightrope really well, which is that in this life, all you can do is like control your actions, but you can't control how anyone else responds. And the really beautiful thing about this is as you start to really focus on what you're doing instead of expecting other people to behave in alignment with what you want, it actually frees up a ton of brain space. Because instead of worrying about how this other person is going to behave and how can I get them to do this and how can I make sure I get promoted, instead of worrying about all this, that kind of stuff, I'm going to focus on my work. I'm going to focus on what makes me happy. I'm going to focus on how I want to live this life. And if these people want to recognize it, the value in that, that's fine. If they don't want to recognize the value in it, why do I want to waste my time being upset that someone doesn't recognize my value? That doesn't help me at all. And so just to summarize, anger is a really tricky emotion. It's a tricky emotion because, first of all, we demonize it as a society. Secondly, it oftentimes causes bad things to happen. It sort of makes us lose control and potentially even hurt people. And the third thing that's like honestly really tricky is everyone's like, yeah, anger is incredibly healthy. Like get in touch with your anger. But when we get in touch with our anger, like sometimes it kind of screws us, right? Like we end up hurting people. People don't talk to us anymore. And even sort of getting in touch with this healthy anger can sometimes cause us to lose control. So even if people are saying, okay, yeah, anger is healthy, like you should get in touch with it. The question is like, how? And that's the key thing to understand is that if we want to get in touch with our anger, if we want to develop a healthy relationship with anger, we have to start by understanding what is healthy anger and what is unhealthy anger. Once we understand those two things, that anger is a defensive mechanism designed to help us protect our territory, then we can understand, okay, when is anger appropriate? When is it okay? And when is it not okay? The last thing to consider is that in either case, even if anger is appropriate and someone violates your boundary, we still want to be in control of it, right? And that's where we can use some of these things like breathing techniques or even taking a step away because oftentimes we don't need to act then and there, right? We can literally step away for like five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes or a day or a week or whatever, and then come back to the situation and sort of channel that anger in a healthy way where you can say, hey, I really think what you did was inappropriate. And I consider it to be like a violation of my boundaries. I really don't think it's fair or appropriate for you to behave this way with me at all. You can sort of feel that anger in there, but don't let it get control of you. And then you can sort of like lay a boundary with them, right? And so if you want to develop a healthy relationship with anger, start by understanding the difference between healthy and unhealthy anger. And then furthermore, employ some of these techniques to really understand where your expectations come from. And even when you're feeling angry, how to not let it control you.